Are you ready to watch my engine come together? Because that's exactly what's happening on today's episode. The pistons and cylinders are now assembled. So Chris has gone ahead and slid the pistons into the cylinders. So next up is actual assembly onto the rods and block. I know most of you have seen ARP head studs before, but I bet you haven't seen them come packaged like this. Now, these are the head studs for the Porsche. They look incredible. They're also incredibly expensive, but the guys over at Turn 14 hooked me up with a sweet deal. So I'm not complaining too much about it. Anyways, the reason why we're using these, not the stock ones is, these are obviously higher tensile strength. They're gonna be more durable, robust, and have a higher clamping load, which is exactly what we need to run more boost with, without the worry of these ever breaking. This nifty tool here is actually for more so for removing studs, right, Mike? Yeah. But every once in a while, you got to use it to install some. Check it out. I've never seen one of those before, and I am impressed. I'm gonna have to add that to the list of stuff I need to buy. And that's it, there we are. Our ARP head studs are installed. And now we're ready for pistons and cylinders. So here's a rather unique way of installing pistons and the cylinders. And now Mike's just popping in the Clip? Yep. Attempting to at least. It's almost like a dentist's mm -hmm. office here. The light shining. The tight little space there. Are we just being smart Alex, about how easy this is going to go together? Uh huh. <laughs> If you're wondering why the uh, rags are all here, that's so that little clip doesn't fall back into the case and then everything has to come apart. So the hand method of inserting the circlip did not work. No, sir. This is switching over to a factory tool. Yep. We'll see if this one goes. Alrighty though, it's kind of turned out to be a big pain in the butt. Yeah, that's very close. Well. Close? Very close. Just you'll need a strike with a hammer. <laughs> Pop it in. Nope. Nope. Son of a. Son of a. Oh. No. Whoa. Were you a good girl? Oh yes. baby, oh baby. Oh! Yes, finally, look at that. <laughs> After about. 15 attempts. The first clip is in. Give her a visual. I'll take it. We've got uh, five more. Geez, five Yay! more to go. This is going to be fun. So there's the factory gasket. It's coated in Viton, so it's got a really good high temperature seal. Oil, yeah, oil resistant seal on it. Very course, thin you gotta coat. be careful not to pinch it, I assume. Yeah, exactly. And then if you do, we start from square one. Right. Well, I can. And we definitely don't want to pinch slide that it up on the cylinder now. Good. Oh, slide yeah, now I cylinder see. in. Yep. And down it goes. See. Alright. Ooh, yes, look at that. 28 millimeters, 7.51 compression. These little fancy hold down tools to keep the cylinders from moving. We definitely don't want that sliding off, do we? No. So as you rotate the engine, keeps the cylinder fixed in position. Steady, look at that. And then the 
and just slides right in. Eventually. <laughs> there we go, look at that. Very nice. Very nice indeed. This is actually the last cylinder. All the other ones are done. And one more. One more fun little circlip to install. That's right. It's our, the circlips have actually gone pretty well after the first one. Yeah, once we made a tool. That's right. Well, these C-clips have been giving us a lot of trouble just staying in place. So, odds are it's going to give us more trouble here, but I'm going to be positive and say this is going to go on the first hit. Oh, I'm positive. I'm positive it's going to give us trouble. <laughs> Strong, good hit with the hammer. Yes. Yes. Look at that. And success. Yes, sir. Knock the old barrel down. The last one here. Yeah, slide it down. Get off your fingers. Three, that would not be a good thing. Voila. Success indeed. We now have a long block, or are we missing cylinder heads to call this a long block? Uh, yeah, long block is usually got hoods on it, but uh, we certainly Let's just say we're stuff. halfway there. Progress is being made, and that is a good thing. With the cooling tins in place and the oiling tubes dropped in, out comes the cylinder head portion of the assembly. So the cylinder heads have all new intake and exhaust valves on the turbos. All the exhaust valves are sodium filled. They're all 49 millimeter intake. 41.5 millimeter exhaust with nine millimeter stems. These have high strength, high RPM valve springs. So if you start to miss a shift and you catch it, you're not gonna just bend the valves right away like you would with the factory spring. Excellent. Ultralight retainers, so it helps reduce the reciprocating mass at higher RPMs. And of course, now you've got a motor that's well balanced. It's gonna be nice and smooth at those high revs. And of course, they're all glass beaded and super clean. New guides, new stem seals. Good for years to come. Yes, sir. We can't forget the ARP stud set. So we're gonna be installing these next. Of course, with the provided assembly lube. One very smart way, get washers down there using the magnetic one, let's drop them in. There we go. Oh, I see now why you can't bolt the cylinder heads down without putting the, the cam tower yes. on. Yeah, that There's makes sense. Alignment dowels. It's official. We've got ourselves a full long block assembled and ready to go. So now on to adding all the other accessories. So what camp shafts are we using here? Obviously mine were a little gouged and yep, badly pitted, which is not uncommon when you have some of the newer oils that don't leave a good oil film. So the rocker will actually just dig in. It wears out the rocker, wipes out the camshaft. They all have to be replaced. So since your cams are bad, we're gonna go ahead and replace them with something that's got a higher lift and more duration. One of the things that really holds back the 930 engine is that they've got a really small, really weak cam. Right. And that's what really, part of dumbing down the driving experience, part of that, that epic turbo lag. <laughs> so 
Anytime you get this engine to breathe better, especially given that it has such small ports in the heads, that's a good thing. So, uh, usual thing the factory had is a one step up, it's a 911 SC grind, they even used it in the Turbo 3.6. This is a 964 profile, it's what they used in the Turbo S 3.6. Uh, it's again, more lift, more duration, just a hotter cam, but they still have excellent idle, good vacuum, so right. great drivability. Really an ideal cam with EFI. With ported heads and an engine this size, we've done a reliable 550 of the wheels. So, wow. 550 of the wheels capability, um, you know, good drivability. Actually, we just did a 600 on ethanol. So, yeah. Yeah, so there's no drawbacks on them. No drawbacks, really. So, um, if you're going through the top end of your engine, you want to drive your car, enjoy it, put cams in it. These are the way to go. Well, I've never seen a tool like this. Mike, what's going on here with this thing? We are measuring cam parallelity, and that is the distance the cam is in or out so that the timing chain does not eat into the gear. Uh, it's a very specific process, and it has to be within 0.25 millimeters of the factory spec. 0.25? Yes. Oh my goodness. That seems ridiculously tight tolerance, but I assume we'll get it down pat with this thing. Is this a Porsche? Tool or is this something you guys made? Uh, it, it is specific to these engines. It's not Porsche factory. Okay. Um, it's through an aftermarket company, but yes, it is specific to this engine, or this family of engines. Well, I'm excited to see this work. 7685. 7686. 7685. Call it 76.85. Yes. Oh, yeah. So the verdict is we're good. Almost. We have Double still check more with, uh, checking to do. Every now and then, the, the variances in the case with that tool sometimes it doesn't me measure quite right. I got you. So we always double check with this, and we usually get a different number, but it's usually pretty, cool. pretty close to the same. By what 76.85. That's 0.2 millimeter difference. 7669, 7670, 7670, three times. So now the gears have just come off and we're gonna be setting cam timing, which Mike just explained to me is a very complex process because it's not like most engines where there's a mark on the pulley, on the crank pulley, and then on the cam pulleys, or gears. So this actually is done in a completely different way that we're gonna get to watch and learn in just a second. This is where the process starts then. You put the key in. Put the right. Woodruff key in the cam. Yeah. Put the all that gear. The inside gear, whatever. Yeah. Inside cam gear, yeah. The key's in there, and that is kind of your top point? Um, yes, that is, for starter, ba a good base point to start. Get this back off of there. And so where is the actual crank fully set to the pistons being, like one of the, the, the number one piston being a top dead center, or no? Yes, one and four, the front two uh, cylinders are at TDC right now. Okay. Um, because cam timing isn't set, it doesn't matter which one's at TDC, they're just, they're both at TDC. I got you. Um, so a good starting point is both cams, keyway straight up, uh, and then assemble the gears. Those are either gears, right? Correct. So, it looks like you guys have some special tool to kind of yeah, set the tension. Exactly. Just tension the chain. Just snug enough. Like it, I guess it doesn't really matter 
Well, as long as, it's, as long as it's there's tight. good tension, right? Yeah. You only put a rocker in on one side or both sides? Uh, we'll need to put an intake on in on both sides. So why is that? Uh, so we can find how much this is getting pushed down by the cam. Um, overlap. Yeah. Um, for timing. And that's how you figure out the timing. Correct. Is that specific to timing or is it just uh, no. what you want to set it to? No, this is specific to what valve last should be on these engines. Okay. Well, this just got complicated. Anytime I see these gauges come out, I know we're in for a process. Dial indicator, that uh, that goes on the retainer? Correct, yeah. On the valve spring? Yep. So you're setting it to zero? Yep. That it's technically zero, so this and is I have up. zero. I'm not, I don't care about this side right now, so... so we're just focusing we're on one to one eight, the one side. 1.26. So you're going around 360 degrees? Yep. And Chris, what are you looking for here on the dial? When we get lift off now, and then we're looking for 1.26 millimeters. So we're at 8, 0, 10, 20, slow down. We're at 1.59. All right, so the cam's way advanced right now. Not a big deal. Back off the timing on the cam. To zero? Yeah. So you said it was at 1.6 or 1.59? It should be 1.26 and we were at 1.69. 69, okay. So the cam is advanced, so that means... Right, so now we're going to take the pin everything out on that end. So you we pretty much got to break this all apart again. Yep. 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 And, and, and effectively just it, move it. it. Yeah, we're going to advance the crank relative to this so that we're retarding the cam back to the proper time. Wow. Well, so this can get into multiple times until yes. you actually go, get this done. I need to go back to where we need where we need to be. So I know how far I need to move the crank with the pin out. Yep. Just when you thought just things lifted. couldn't get more complex. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 10, 20, and stop. Right. Okay, so now you're going to spin the crank just the tad. Right. If you advance the crank and the cam does not move, you're effectively retarding the cam, which is what we needed this time. Now you put the pin back in, which locks the cam to the gear. Correct. And then back on the bolt goes. And we do that all over again. Start all over. 20 and stop. Okay. That was easy. That's it. Well, we're at 1.29. We ideally want to be at 1.26. So. I think I'm just a hair. With our range and spec, we got to torque it now, but I assume this too can throw it off a bit, right? Yes, it can. So you really have to apply counter pressure and not. There we go. There we go. So we'll check it one more time now. Yes, sir. Of course. Back to zero. Loose off, 10. 50, 0, 10. Such a precise um, method. I'm just a squeak over, but. Okay, well, if you're just a squeak over, we're at 124 to 125. I'm at the far end of the timing mark, so yeah. we're talking. The spec is 1.26, we're at 124 to 125. Call it close enough. Sounds pretty perfect to me. Yeah. All right, one side is done. 
On to the other. We're at 110 or just 10? We're, we're at one, sorry, we're at 112, so we need to pick up 14. So we only need to go to here. Stop. Perfect. Jesus. Uh, we might get that by bumping. Bump Maybe. So you're close? Try it. Very, Very close. close. Yeah, it looks super close here. That's like just off. According the to the camera, line. it looks perfect, but <laughs> according to the dial gauge, we're off a bit. Round and round we go. Where we stop? Hopefully. We hopefully. <laughs> 1.26. 10, 10. 20. Lower. 23. That's pretty damn perfect. That's where we were on the other one, right? Yeah. So we're within, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, maybe 0.2. Oh, sorry, 0 0.02, 0 0.02 millimeters. Well, hallelujah. That was easy. <laughs> easy button. We need that right now. And here's the header install. I actually don't know what type of headers these are. Chris, you said they were from... They look like they were Kenny McNeil headers. Kenny McNeil headers, yeah. I got them from Chad Block at CBDRD. He's the man that did work on my Evo, had these sitting around and said, hey, you want them? I was like, hell yeah, I'll take them. So here they are. No matter what, they are better than what was on there. The <laughs> Agreed. As a part of the EFI conversion, I've decided to add two knock sensors, actually, not one, but two. For more safety, the Infinity EMS that I'm going to be running is capable of controlling these and it's just going to give me that extra barrier of protection so if there is any detonation, the ECU is going to be able to pick it up and either reduce timing, boost, or anything else to counteract that. Sadly, we've come to that time again where we have to wrap this episode but make sure to tune in because there's so much more to come as we continue to build my Porsche 930 Turbo.